that is the same buck that we saw on that grass field two days in a row where he had a, a doe hold up on the second day. Um, he was following these two does. I don't know if either one of them was hot because at the end of the encounter, they went one way and he went the other. So it's, it could be that he was just following them, you know, kind of dogging them. But uh, the buck, the buck wasn't super spooked. He did look up and he spotted us in the tree, but that didn't seem like it stressed him out too bad. He just didn't know what we were. But those does, I'm pretty sure, hit our ground scent because where we had to come through the brush down there, I'm sure we left a lot of scent on the the low branches and the and the uh, vegetation that's okay the does are out in the field with some luck that buck might swing back i'm still not 100 percent sure i'm going to shoot that deer he's the same one that i had stopped the other night when the shot wasn't quite right um, maybe at some point i need to take that as an omen and, and try to kill him but um, hopefully he swings back by Pretty good chance that, that buck is going to come back out looking for those does. He wasn't very spooked, and obviously, um, you know, they were pretty nervous, but they weren't over overall spooked either. But if you look at that, <coughs> excuse me. But if you look at the the way the leaves were blowing, they were blowing directly from us, right to those does. So the combination of staying clean and running this ozonics in the tree made a huge difference there, because. Everything was blowing right to those two does. They got nervous, but they didn't blow out. So if this buck comes back by again, uh, we can owe some of our success to the ozonics in the tree. It's November 8th, and uh, didn't get a chance to say that earlier because we got wrapped up with that old 10-pointer that was down below the tree stand here. The morning hunt uh, is pretty much over with. And we haven't seen anything since those deer popped out first thing this morning. Makes for a long sit, but um, it's a beautiful morning. The wind has freshened up a little bit. It's out of the north, so it's been cooler. The humidity has dropped. It feels a lot more like November now rather than September like it did yesterday and first thing this morning. I expect that with this change in, in uh, weather conditions that we should see some better hunting over the next few days. For this afternoon's hunt, I'm going to go out on this ridge behind me that we call Fisher's Ridge. And we're going to try to find a buck that we call the Fisher Buck. And we call him that obviously because he spent a lot of time up on this ridge. We had tons of trail camera pictures of this deer back in September and early October. And we put him on the list, but not towards the top. Uh, I would say, you know, we're still hoping that Skinny will show up. This is not very far at all from where we've been getting recent pictures of that buck. And of course, you know, the Fisher buck, which is another one that we've been seeing and getting pictures of uh, fairly uh, regularly down in the next valley over. So either one of them could pop up on this ridge and uh, either one of them would be a, a good target for tonight. Uh, they're both definitely gonna be on the hot list. Uh, anything, either one of them gets within bow range and I'm gonna be hauling back on the string. We're going back to a redneck blind We've found over the years that when you're hunting these open ridges like this, um, you either have to really peg the deer where they're very consistent in the trails that they're using coming out to these ridges, uh, or you have to be in a blind. Because the blind can be in the middle of the plot or in the middle of the field, and all the trails eventually converge on that point. But if you have to pick the exact trail to be on, uh, that can be a lot tougher. So just by cutting down the angles, we go right to the middle of the field and uh, hopefully we can get one of these bucks to come within bow range. You can hear the neighbor's dog barking here uh, and I can talk as loud as I want to in this spot. It's perfect. I just park by their house, slam doors, talk loud, and we can sneak in from there and get back on the ridge. Anytime you can match normal human activity with your parking spot or how you enter or exit your tree stands, you definitely want to take advantage of that. I've got a little bit less than an hour left of legal shooting time tonight, and the tally stands at uh, 10 antlerless deer 
in one year and a half old buck so far. Seems like on November 8th, with that many uh, tempting does around that we would have a couple of bucks up on here, a couple more bucks. We got enough time, I mean, they're still gonna show up. We can't go the whole evening, November 8th with that many does and not have a couple of bucks pop up on here. So we'll show you the action that we that we have the rest of the evening here. And uh, tomorrow, I think it's supposed to stay cool with these northerly, northwesterly type winds. So I would hope that tomorrow would be a, a good day of rut hunting as well. So keep checking back and we'll keep bringing you these daily uh, video blogs right here on Winky's blog.